Hello, I'm Jess of Cottage Lane. Welcome to episode two of I'll Quilt If I Want To. And happy Valentine's Day if you're watching today. This will be the last time that we see these hearts in the background. Um, I did want to go over a couple housekeeping things. One is I realized only after recording this video that I have been recording it so you can only visually watch it on YouTube with your phone up and down. Um, so starting with the next episode, I will record it with my phone um, horizontally. So you'll be able to flip your phone and see it. I think it'll show up on TV or computer better that way. I apologize, I didn't realize. And the other thing I wanted to mention is you can find me on Instagram at cottage.lane. And today we are going to go over how to make a flying geese, four at a time flying geese. So on my block, it's this piece right here, all of the points, and my block is coming out next, no, this, this Friday. So if you're a part of the Springtide Sampler, then you will be getting that Friday. So let's go over how to make four at a time flying geese. So to start with the four at a time flying geese, you are going to need a background collar, a contrast collar, and then something to mark with, whether it's a pen or a pencil, or I'm going to use a hair marker that creases the fabric. So we are going to make three by six inch finished flying geese. So to make that, you will need one seven and a half inch square for your background. And you will also need four, four and a half inch contrast colors. So the first thing that we need to do is take our contrast colors and flip them to the wrong side. And you will mark a line from corner to corner like this. So you can see the crease that mine made. If you want or need to use a, a pen or like a water soluble marker, that is fine too. But this is going to be our cut line. So you're gonna sew a quarter inch on either side of this line. So mark all four of your squares and then we'll go to the next step. Okay, now all of our squares are marked you're going to take two of them to start with. And you are going to lay your background square out and you're going to line them up on the square with the line running up. So you're going to sew a quarter of an inch so you want it going up through the middle of your big square. And you're gonna line this one up and your lines should line up so you can sew through both of them. So I'm going to pin to hold them in place as best I can. And then I'm gonna take them to my sewing machine and sew a quarter of an inch on either side of this line. And then we'll be back. Okay, so now we have our piece sewn. And I'm going to take the pins out. And then I'm going to give it a good press before we cut to help relax the threads and make everything lay really nicely. Okay. So now we're going to cut on that line that we previously made. I'm gonna get a bigger roller. That one's a little tiny. So you're gonna line this right along that line and cut these apart. And so now you have two pieces that look like this. 
and I, of course, like to press everything open. So that's what I'm going to do here. But since these are kind of tricky, I like to press them to one side first. and then flip it over and then kind of press open. And I will grab my flatter spray that we used last time. I really use this every time. I really like it and it helps everything lie really nicely. Gives you a nice finished block. So we're gonna do the same thing for the next one. And then we will add the next piece. Okay, we now have our pieces all pressed and they kind of look like a little heart. They're very cute. But now we're going to add our next piece. So we're gonna put one aside and grab one to show you. So here is my square. You can see the line running up and down and we are going to lay that on our background piece. So the line is going straight up through the center. And I'm going to pin it again, just to help hold everything in place. And just like before, we're gonna sew a quarter inch on either side of this line. So I'm going to get this one pinned and ready, and I'm gonna sew a quarter inch on either side, and then I will be back here and we will finish up our block. So we've gotten these all sewn together and I'm gonna take the pins out. And I did wanna mention one thing, but I thought it would be easier to show you after I had done it. But you can see the line that we sewed on and you can see my lines of stitches. And I'll try to hold it. So you can see that the row of stitches kind of fits in this V right here on both sides. And that's what you're aiming for because that is a quarter of an inch over. So you want your stitches to either start or end, however you do it, in this little V. And now I'm going to press it just to help everything lie nicely. And I'm going to trim again on that line that we marked previously. other one and now it's starting to look like flying geese so I'll flip this back over and we can the same technique on these I press to one side first and then open that seam up and press it better. And then use my flatter spray. So you will want to repeat this on all of these to make up your four blocks. But now that we have one done, I will show you how I trim it. So they're going to be three by six. So I like to lay mine down and see, we have plenty of room. So three and a half by six and a half is going to be our unfinished size before it's sewn. So we are going to trim this to three and a half by six and a half and once sewn into your quilt top, the block will end up being three inches by six inches because of the seam allowance. So right now, you're gonna want to find the 
three and a quarter inch mark, and that's half of your block. Actually, I'm gonna do it like this. And then I like to go a quarter of an inch down. So our point is at the edge of the block once it's sewn. And you can line everything up. Okay, so three and a quarter is where my point is. And then I don't know how that moved or maybe I just goofed up. Okay, let's try this again. Three and a quarter is where my point is and I have a quarter of an inch space from the top. So I'm gonna trim that off and trim this side. And now from here, I should be able to yes, line this up with the six and a half. And trim that side and the bottom of the block. And now we are left with our flying geese that is three and a half by six and a half inches. And then whenever you sew your seam at the top, it will butt right up with that point. So there you are. And you can do the rest of the blocks the same and you will have four at a time flying geese. I hope that was simple. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that you have your four flying geese units now to make your Solis block or any other block that you want to make with them. So I will see you next week. Bye.